We need to talk about how we communicate. We need to talk about things like reply all. We need to talk about things like you sending me things I, I, that I don't need to get. Little things like that. And then we need to talk about big things as well because we're training all the time. And, and, and if we're going to work together or live together, there's an ecology that's represented by you know, all these people being together in an environment together. And the ecology will be greatly improved if we, def if we refine our communication processes and talk about how we communicate. If we're doing things that are creating irritation or, or making it difficult for us to work together, then we have to talk about those things. And I'm saying this in the contest as something relatively silly, like reply all. It's an irritation. It's not some huge thing. But the thing is, if we don't talk about them, we just let them go, you're still complaining five years later. There's something about having a negotiation that can make a difference right now. You sit down with the person and you talk to them and you say, this is a situation that's going on. It's a problem for me. I don't know if it's a problem for you. I want to talk to you about it. And I recommend a three-part conversation. The three parts of the conversation are goals, roles, and procedures. The first part of the conversation, you start the conversation out by expressing your intention or your goal. You might say something like this. You know, I really value our relationship. It could be a personal relationship. It could be a work relationship. It's my goal that we really work together well. It's my goal that we communicate well. And I feel like, say, in the past, maybe we haven't done that. And the reason I want to talk to you, I actually almost didn't have the conversation because I didn't know how you would take it. But I also realized it's important for us to be able to communicate. So I did it anyway, and I'm hoping that it works out well. My goal is to establish better communication. Whatever you need to say. And part of the goal thing may be to ask them some questions about some of their practices. And say, in the meeting yesterday, you made a comment. And, it, and, it, and initially, I took it as a personal attack. I didn't really know where it came from, so I wanted to talk to you about it. What was your goal for saying that? Now you've kind of switched. You said, my goal is to improve our communication. Now I'm asking you, what was your goal for what you did, for what you said, or whatever? This is an interesting transition, but it's all part of the goals phase. It's really important that you don't start a conversation by putting the other person on the defensive by blaming them. You always throw your socks on the floor. You always leave a mess in the kitchen and don't clean it up. You, you always reply all. And I'm tired of being irritated by all of this stuff. You know, all those alwayses and nevers and all that kind of stuff need to go away. But beyond that, accusing somebody of something or telling them what they did wrong is a horrible way to start a conversation. The best way to start a conversation is with your positive intention and your goals, which represent a vision for the future of our relationship. From in broad terms, I'm hoping we can have a better relationship. That's why I'm here. Now, with that in mind, this situation happened, and I really want to understand your goal. It could be a, con a conversation with somebody that you live with and say, you know, this issue, we've talked about it over and over again. It keeps happening. What is your goal for doing this? And you put it in your own words or whatever, but it is an important question. You've got to ask the question, what are you trying to accomplish? Why are you doing it this way? Because for me, it's an issue. And now we talk about it. We're trying to understand. I'm trying to understand your point of view. You're trying to understand my point of view. Goals. My goals, your goals. If it's two people in two different departments, they have different goals. They have different issues that they're dealing with. And maybe I don't understand this department over here, but we interface periodically, and there's always this friction. So I'm trying to understand your goals. Then we start to transition from a conversation about goals to a conversation about roles. Are roles important in your home? Absolutely. So is it my responsibility to pick up your socks when you throw them on the floor? Is that my role? Is it my role to clean up after you when you make a mess in the kitchen? Is it my role to, you know, because, because we need to talk about roles. Definition, if we don't get agreement and negotiate agreement about our roles, then we're making assumptions. And assumptions themselves create a problem. Now, depending on your style, if somebody makes an assumption about your role and you don't like it, you might hammer them, blame them, or just avoid the conversation at all, but just be irritated about it until the pressure builds up. The, the problem with that is that, that while the pressure is building up, you're the one that's actually experiencing the pressure of it, which isn't healthy for you. And then when you explode, the explosion doesn't solve the problem. It creates sort of this dissonant experience that doesn't really solve anything for anybody. 
And what really needs to happen is a sensitivity to, okay, here's the situation, can I live with it or not? If I can live with it, I just have to reframe the way I look at it and then just expect that it's going to continue. And if, am I okay with that? But if I'm not okay with it, then I need to approach this individual and have a conversation. So the first phase is goals, the second phase is roles. That's where we try to work out the roles. And, and to, because if we're going to work together, we need to sort of redefine our roles with respect to how we're working together. And that leads us to the procedures part where we're trying to change how we work together. Your procedure right now is you come home from work, you take off your clothes, you throw them on the floor. I walk by, I don't like a messy floor, so I pick them all up and put them in the hamper. The hamper's right over here. You're here, throwing them on the floor here. See, what I like to do is to have a procedure when, when you take them off, you put them in the hamper. I'd be willing to move the hamper over here just to get you to put it in there. That's the negotiation part. That's the negotiation right. part. That's the compromise that you're talking about. That's where I'm willing to work with you, but I want you to understand my situation. I'm not antagonistic here. I, my goal is to work with you and to have a better relationship, but this practice that we have is problematic. And, it, and, and the roots are in, in the assumptions about roles. So, so we, we talk about it, we discuss it, I understand your position, you understand my position, then we try together to come to a solution. Now there's a difference between two team members trying to arrive at a solution together, which is the way negotiation ought to work, and two people who are antagonistic toward each other who are trying to prove who's right and who's wrong. And, and, and what the good negotiator does is they try to figure out how we can reposition the way we're talking or listening to the context of the way we're talking to each other, how much respect I hear in the way we're talking, how much engagement in the conversation, and I'm trying to really get you to be on my team.